So as we say, it's going to be Pickens from Dean Cooper off the front row. Then it's going to be Graham Standrix pick Stephen Taylor in the 21P. On the outside of him is going to be the man out of Chico, California, J.A. Jonathan Allard in the 11 USA. Then we go back to Jamie McDonald in the 71A starting out of five with Jamie Larson in the 82A starting out of six. Then we go back to Mr. Angry, James Darn in the 6K out of seven with Max Guilford in the 79M on the outside of him out of eight. Then we go back to Keaton Darm in the 88K out of nine with young rookie Zachary Soko in the 47A starting out of 10. Then we go back to Raymond Ray Ray Griffin in the 11A starting out of 11. And then Dean Brindle in the 22A out of 12. Rolling over, Corbin Anderson making the transition across to the sprint cars in the 69A starting out of 13. And Lance Beal for HLR Racing in the 87A out of 14. Steve Smith in the 76A, he'll be starting out of 15 with Holly Williams on the outside of him in the 9M out of 16. Then we go back to Ryan O'Connor in the 98A out of 17 with Dion Kendall in the 7A on the outside of him, starting out of grid 18. Then starting out of 19, Richard Battersby in the 99A with Rob Vasey on the outside of him in the 35A. Then we go back to the last row, 77A, Carl Fenton, and then on the outside of him, Nick Edmonds in the 37A. So, Graham Standring, pick Stephen Taylor. Nick Brown, I don't think we got a call from you there, did we? No, I was sitting on the fence on that one. I thought I'd just stay right out of it. I mean, I, I picked Brock Maskovich and Peter Honeywell in the last race, and both of them were DNF, so I'm just staying clear away from this one. You know, you know what it is, Nick? You know what's uh, let you down tonight? What's that? You didn't have your hot dog at the start of the night, did you? That's true, but I'm pretty. I'm looking forward to the super stocks. I'll be able to pick a winner in that one. Trust me. Perfect. I'll leave you to it, mate. Enjoy Thanks. your uh, your stint down there. You've got a bit of time to go grab yourself a hot dog, so you can be primed <laughs> and ready for that super stock feature. Thank you. Thank you. Good man. Good man. Always bringing us the goods down there, including the hot dogs and all the good fast food down there. I've had my hot chips tonight, and. Uh, fueled up ready to go i think i've almost got ready to uh almost got time to get another thing of hot chips in here i reckon so uh nine o'clock absolutely racing through the program here tonight luke saw western spring speedway and uh looking forward to this one so as we get the cars rolling around ready to take formation and set to go green as we see Dion kendall rolling around here so he'll be starting out of group position number 18 he was having an absolutely brilliant drive here last week at the Speedway, but unfortunately after that incident down here with Allard Brindle and himself getting caught up, and uh, I must say, down here from where I'm standing, actually, uh, beautiful repairs to the fence that the team at WS Speedway have done after uh, the Extend Pilates IQ component 7A decided that it was going to uh, slice through the fence, and uh, team have done a great job to recover there so as the cars get themselves into their four wide salute position if you're uh, at home cold beverage still in hand or if not run to the fridge quickly and grab yourself one if you're churning in on flow or at ws speedway getting your piece of the action oh as the cars lock dean cooper says no thank you this is not for me pickens needs to get that left rear onto the grass and dean cooper wasn't too happy to go four wide there and uh, Pickens has already had one feature this year where he didn't even make the start of the race because of a uh, formation lap incident. I'm sure he doesn't want to have another one. So uh, let's wait to get these cars sorted and in position. I think we've abandoned the full wide salute by the looks. And uh, as we say, it's going to be Pickens from the rookie, Dean Cooper, who seems to just keep getting better and better and better as the season goes on. So the JB's Hydro Extreme 84P man off the front row at the moment, it almost seems no one has an answer for Pickens. There was speculations last week of traction control and whatnot. I went down and caught up with Justin Inslee and the team down there. And uh, obviously, where we stand in the uh, commentary booth, we can't really hear the engine notes too well. And uh, just the way the exhaust system is on that car and the way the mufflers are turned uh, just had a bit of a unique sound. So. We get ready to turn them loose here for 25 laps for the Salters a sprint car feature here at Luke's All Western Spring Speedway. Pickens and Cooper is the front row, and where Green Pickens gets off to a stonker and leads them down into turn number one. But watch out, the young rookie Dean Cooper running high side, but not able to stick with Pickens. Here comes the 21W man, Stephen Taylor. Graham Standring picked it. He's not scared. He runs that car high and wide. Jonathan Allard on the pole line, trying to squeak under the man out of Wellington. 
as we've got one around and it's the 69 of Corbin Anderson down on the start finish line. So Richie Battersby in the Penrite HLR racing machine also on the infield there just left of shot. There he is there so Corbin Anderson losing the front wing so if we can zoom in maybe on the uh, 69 machine of uh, Corbin Anderson looks like there's a uh, little bit of extra damage there other than just the front wing so that'll be him done and dusted so J.A. Russell action replay so Anderson goes round. it actually looks like uh, Richard Battersby's an innocent bystander so uh, flat left rear as well for Corbin Anderson and uh, looks like a bit of extra damage there maybe even uh, to the front chassis rail with trail chassis rails maybe even on the front of that car so uh, that car looks we don't know whether it's just the way that that front cowling panel sitting or whether that chassis actually looks a little bit narrower. Yeah, so we're just trying to observe the extent of the damage there. So hopefully we manage to get that car actually brought a little bit closer so Graham Standring can hopefully have a look because Corbin Anderson will be coming out of there. But uh, yeah, that, that right side down tube looks like it's a little bit steeper here. Yeah, that's a, that's a big bend there in the front of Corbin Anderson's car, so it actually pulls in, and it's a little bit steeper as well, so unfortunate there for the uh, youngster. He was starting out of grid position number 13, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually a lot more damage than what it probably uh, actually looks from the uh, grandstands. So unfortunate there. Hopefully that car gets dragged a little bit further, a little bit further, and then hopefully Graham Standard can manage to get his eye on the action and uh, see the extent of the chassis damage to that car. So I don't know if you're able to squeak over there, Graham. Maybe just have a quick nosy and give us uh, a little bit more of your expert uh, knowledge on that. Um, we're well, just going to go and look at the Corbin Anderson car. Oh, that's had a good bend in the front. It's taken a really hard hit. The, the whole bar rack and everything's really bent right across. The frame's not looking good. I'm looking at Corbin. He ain't looking too flash either. He's not very happy about it. But this is meant to come down straight here. And so the whole front bar rack, which is this, where the torsion bars are, is both bent and bent across in the car. So that's quite substantial damage to the front of that car. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, we better get back to our, back to our box. Thanks very much, Graham. And uh, yeah, as we saw, you know, we thought that. Unfortunately, we, we never like to call out the extent of the crash damage of these uh, beautiful race cars here at Luke's or Western Spring Speedway. But yeah, that was uh, probably a lot worse than what we're actually giving it credit for. Just we see another puff of smoke. I don't know. I reckon that's almost a nos purge out the back of the uh, Stephen Taylor 21 machine. We're, we're speculating Michael Pickens having traction control. So let, while we're at it, throw nos into the. Uh, into the system there for Stephen Taylor. So lights are out around Lucas Oil, Western Springs Speedway. We get set, ready to go racing. Can Cooper answer 1NZ Michael Pickens as we get ready to turn them loose once again. Wheel spin for Stephen Taylor. Both wheels smoking up across the start finish line. Allard goes high side, tries to run around the outside of the man out of Wellington. Does so successfully, but Stephen Taylor wings it hard down into Penrite turn number three. Can he jump back in front? He does so. But watch out, here comes the man with that brand new race car under him. Jamie Larson coming through with J-Mac, Jamie McDonald. There's a heated battle there. That's for fifth and sixth track position. Darms in there as well on the Hydrolink 6K as well. So watch out, this is not over for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh position. Jamie McDonald trying to get on the inside of the 11 USA of the Daltons. Man, Jonathan Allard, who's running in fourth position. Allard trying to find a little bit of clear air to follow uh, Stephen Taylor at the moment and settle into a bit of a rhythm just as Jamie McDonald almost flips the wall. And Jamie Larson now tries high side down at Penrite turn number three and four. Can't make anything stick there. But the man who is absolutely cleared out is Michael Pickens just as... He gets to the back of Nick Edmonds. Now Pickens almost hits the wall. Down at Solders, no man's land. And loses a little bit of momentum. And the man who's actually still coming for him is the youngster, Dean Cooper. He's driving exceptionally. As we say that, Cooper just slides into the wall. Nick Edmonds pulls to the inside, allows Pickens through. 
Dean Cooper is still hard on the gas. He is not giving this away. Allard still trying to sneak up the inside of the man out of Wellington, Stephen Taylor. Pickens now clears off Nick Edmonds and the Fenton machine of it. Carl Fenton. Pickens now trying to pick off Holly Williams. Dean Cooper now into the first of the lap traffic for him around the outside of Nick Edmonds with 18, 17 laps left to go. Four pickets. So there's Dean Cooper around the outside of Nick Edmonds. Let's keep our eyes on this. There he is. So second place moves around to the first of the lap traffic. Here comes the 11 USA just into the back of that shot. So Jonathan Allard is now in the mix. J.A. Jonathan Allard is up into the third position. Lance Beal has sizable damage to the top wing of his 87 B&T machine. So if we see the 84, watch the 84 as he approaches Lance Beal. Check out the top wing. Check out the angle and the damage to the machine of Lance Beal. That is not going to look too flash. That's not going to be too nice. Dean Cooper gets up the inside. Can he make it stick? Here comes Jonathan Allard. He wants a piece of the action. He wants a slice of that second place trophy. And he's in the mix. Dean Cooper gets through on Beal. Allard now navigates the pole line, gets through on Beal as well. Dean Cooper lost a little bit of momentum, lost a little bit of rhythm. Pickens now has three cars between himself and second place man Dean Cooper is Rob Basey. Balls to the inside, all on his own. No noticeable damage, but Jonathan Allard still has nothing. Halfway distance now. 12 laps left to run here at Luxor Western Spring Speedway for the Salters. Red light, pipeline, sprint car feature. Still running here. We keep with that battle with Jonathan Allard. Still no change for second and third. Here's Michael Pickett working his way around the outside of the 76 of Smith. Next up will be the uh, Rhino, Rhino Connor, HLR Racing, Band T, Fuchs Lubricants Machine. So Pickens has lapped himself back up to probably around the 10th position at this point in time. So Pickens now finds himself onto the back of Brindle. That's Ray Ray, Ray McGriffin as Pickens goes round all on his own and gets to the inside, keeps it going. And Yellow is out. Credit where credit's due. Pickens manages to come out of that one unscathed, and Pickens, believe it or not, does not lose any positions. Wow. How did that happen? So that wing of Lance Beal was already looking pretty sad, and it looks like maybe those wing stays just decided to give up at that point in time. So we're going to find a replay of this and bring you the action by J.A. Russell. And uh, here it is. So here's Michael Pickens. The car's already around. And there it is. Michael Pickens brings the car around. So, I don't know. Those wheels are spinning. If that car had traction control, those rear wheels would not be spinning that freely, I would imagine. So Pickens, great job. Keeps the thing pointing in the right direction. Or once he got back onto the, uh, onto the black stuff, so to speak. And uh, look at that finds himself still in the lead this guy is good ladies and gentlemen you're witnessing greatness the one nz crc stadium finance machine of michael pickens he's a class act we can't deny it as we see another angle so there's that replay front wheels in the air keeps his foot on the gas rotates the car allows his competitors to catch up and brings out the yellow does lance Beal. So, Dean Cooper gets another stab at this one. Jonathan Allard running third at the time. Here comes the 21 man of Stephen Taylor in the mix. What are we going to see? We're in single digits. Ready to go here. Just quickly, Graham Standring, did you catch any of that? What did you see? Did you see anything? What are we going to see here for the remaining laps, my friend? Um, yeah, what I did see was that this, this 10 laps ago, what I did see was the 87 car that was going around the back wing, the tree, they call it the tree at the back of the wing, had collapsed, so he had no wing angle, so therefore he had no downforce, so that's the problem, so we're going back to you, Ali. 
As lights are out and we get ready to turn them loose for 10 more laps around Luke Saw Western Spring Speedway. Pickens versus Cooper. Pickens goes. Jamie Larson goes high side. Can Allard sneak up the inside of Cooper? So far, so good. Looks like it. But Dean Cooper is not afraid to mash that gas pedal and keeps the thing high and wide around the outside. Jonathan Allard. Allard goes conservative, running that pole line. Trying to find a little bit of extra drive out of that asphalt on the pole line. But Michael Pickens bolts once again, and Jamie McDonald up and over multiple times, as does the two cars down the back. And that looks like that's the IQ components machine of Dion Kendall and Smith in there as well. So that was further back. So red lights are on, and we are stopping the cars. And that was a heavy impact by definitely Jamie McDonald as we see Trevor running over to J-Mac to make sure he's okay. Steering wheel is off. J-Mac is moving. Ladies and gentlemen, at home or in the stadium, round of applause for Jamie McDonald. He's moving in that car. And unfortunate for Kendall, two weeks in a row. So it doesn't potentially look like anything too major there. There's a little bit of fire under the uh, 7A machine of Dion Kendall. There looks like there's a little bit of fluid leaking out of the underside of that car, whether it's oil or fuel. fuel. We're waiting on the 76 machine of Smith to get out of that car as well. Looks so good. And Smith is out of the car. Ladies and gentlemen, all three drivers are A-OK. -okay. Give them a round of applause. So not the end to the night that either of the or any of these three drivers were hoping for as we pull out the push trucks once again as we jump to a J.A. Russell replay. So watching the action, this is Jamie McDonald on that inside line. Steven Taylor jumps over that left rear with J-Max right rear. Parts flying off the car, front bumper it looks like, up and over. We've got plenty of different angles, unfortunately, for J-Mac at this one. And then just to the rider shot was that incident with Dion Kendall and Smith as well. So watching the 21. So J-Mac well and true. Oh, yeah, hard to tell. That was Stephen, Stephen Taylor was definitely planning on coming down the racetrack. Unfortunately, Jamie McDonald was just too far in there and well committed to that inside line himself as well. And further down the field, this was a completely separate incident. So a different angle of this, just to the right of shot, just out of shot, is that impact there with Jamie McDonald and Stephen Taylor. You see the wheel work by Stephen Taylor trying to keep that car on the road. Thankfully, that nice aluminium cushion strapped to the top of that car for Jamie McDonald. There's the 71 Hikoki machine parked on the infield. And we're going to roll back to camera one. Action brought to you by Perspective Group, get, delivering you all the action. Same angle here. So, wouldn't like to be a Speedway New Zealand referee here. So, J-Max committed. Steven Taylor almost looks like he's already half committed to pulling that car down to the pole line. But J-Max just too committed. Well, not too committed. He's, he's in there. He's doing what he needs to do to make that pass and just interlocks, jump that right rear. And passenger from there on. So as we see multiple different angles from our cameras up here, I'm not too sure. Graham Standring, you're down there trackside. You had a pretty good view from the inside. Did you see any of that action as it unfolded there? I, I didn't see what it started it, but I certainly saw the cars airborne after that, so I had no idea what started Sort of locked into our, our bunker in the middle there, and so our sight's a bit limited. But um, sorry, no, I didn't see what happened, but I know that... Um, Jamie McDonald was um, airborne, and then all I looked around and saw another car just way in the air, so that's all I saw, sorry. So it looks very sad down on the infield of Lucas or Western Spring Speedway at the moment. We've got the car of uh, Fenton down there. We've got Rob Vasey, we've got Lance Beal. We've now got uh, Dion Kendall and uh, Smith down there. We've got Corbin Anderson, Jamie McDonald. But good news is, is the first couple of cars have already refired, as we see Lance Bill and J-Mac walking across the infield there. So 
We'll check out another replay of this as uh, all the drivers, Vasey and J-Mac and the likes, make their way to Graham Standring's bunker. So hopefully once Jamie gets down there with uh, Graham Standring, maybe uh, we'll try and grab a word with you, Graham. So we'll leave the lines open, mate. We'll leave it to you. I do have Jamie here. Well, Jamie, look, we didn't see it here, so I know it's awkward sometimes as racing. Just in your eyes, what happened? Oh, look, I think it's two cars sort of fighting over the same bit of dirt. Um, I put it in there, and, and he obviously wanted that same bit of dirt, and we just come together. I think, honestly, it's probably just one of those things. They have to look at the video, but, yeah, it's just, yeah, we're trying to race hard, and it's one of those things. As spectacular as it looked, I did see that they wheeled the car and the wheels all look like they're in the right place and it looks straight, so you never know until you pull it to bits, but apart from the it, at this stage, doesn't look quite as bad as what I expected it to. Look, I honestly haven't had a look yet. Um, it felt like a decent ride, but um, sometimes those ones that spend a lot of time in the air aren't too bad on the damage. It's those ones that uh, you have close contact with the concrete, that's when it tears up some gear. It's the stop that does it, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is. So. Look, we've got plenty of spare parts and our sponsor, Harris Race Cars, are just 15 minutes up the road and, and they built me a great car and so they'll, they'll get again for next week. OK, well, we can't wait to see you next week, so I hope that it's not so bad. Nah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Thanks. Jamie McDonald it seems to be OK. So, uh, Jamie McDonald, one of his sponsors, bringing us all the replays and unfortunately for uh, Jamie McDonald, his sponsor, J.A. Russell, delivered us the replays of that unfortunate incident down there. So, Haikoki, J.A. Russell, all the likes of the team that allow that program to, uh, you know, keep the wheels on the on the trolley, so to speak, and Lee Rusher and the entire McDonald family and, uh, yeah, family down there, whatnot, Emma and uh, the kids as well, obviously, big family operation, and uh, the race cars they present is absolutely second to none. So credit where credit's due. Unfortunate there for Jamie, and as he says, going for the same piece of dirt there as Stephen Taylor. And unfortunate it'll end up going to the Spearway New Zealand officials. And unfortunately, when uh, it's hard to come to a solution or resolution of uh, these incidents, you know, it doesn't pay for the, the crash damage. So unfortunately, into the night there for JMac, but uh, we look to. Get the cars restarted and ready to go as we see the uh, that's the car of Nick Edmonds down here, down in front of the commentary tower, about to get fired up. 37A man. So uh, once again, the uh, 84 of Dean Cooper is going to get a shot at Michael Pickens once again. Seems like he's had more than once. He has. He's had two or three, and it doesn't seem to have been able to answer him. But the man who's trying to make his way forward. He didn't have any luck trying to get up the inside of Dean Cooper before. Jonathan Allard has been duking it out with Stephen Taylor for the duration of this one. So 25 laps is the distance here. And uh, we'll be ready to turn them loose very shortly to give you all the action before we head into the last feature race here tonight, which is going to be the Superstock feature for 15 laps here. So well ahead of time. Curve you here, not even 9.30 at Luxor Western Spring Speedway, so well ahead of time. And still plenty of action to deliver you at home. So as we see a nice wide shot at the stadium here and the class act, which is the Salter's sprint cars rolling around, lights are out. As we roll the cars round, lights are out around Luxor Western Spring Speedway. Pickens our pace setter from Dean Cooper, Allard and Stephen Taylor. Pickens goes. Can Dean Cooper go with him? Watch out, Jonathan Allard coming through. Stephen Taylor on the outside. Allard still just opting to run that pole line. Don't know if he's got anything to try and run that top shelf with Pickens and Dean Cooper. But he's doing so successfully. Other drivers, Darm and Stephen Taylor trying to make something work up on that high line. But the man out front, Michael Pickens, he can put that uh, CRC Stadium Finance 1NZ anywhere on the racetrack. But here we go, Jonathan Allard and the Daltons 11 USA clears Dean Cooper. Finally, he's been trying for the duration of the race, but watch out, Dean Cooper has not given up. And with only six laps to go next time past the tower, Jonathan Allard tries to hang on to this. 
the maturity versus the youth and exuberance of Dean Cooper. Has Cooper used up too much of his car? We'll have to wait and find out. But we've still got Stephen Taylor and Jamie Larson in this one as well with five laps to go. Pickens has just cleared them out once again. He's got more than the length of the front straightaway on the field. Make it four laps to go. At the moment, Pickens from Allard, from Cooper, from Stephen Taylor. Jamie Larson on that top shelf. Then we go back to the two Darm cars. Then we go back to the two sprint car rookies of Zachary Sokal. And we've got one around, and it's another rookie. Richard Battersby round down at Penrite, turn number three. So is this the Duke that we've been waiting for of Pickens and Allard? Has Pickens used up too much of his car? Has Allard been conserving his car? We're going to have to wait and see, but this is the battle of the one versus the double one off the front row with single digits left to run, four laps left to run here in the Salters Sprint Car feature. here and excited to see what the Dalton's man can bring to the table can he bring anything what has he got for Pickens then we go back to Dean Cooper Stephen Taylor looks like Jamie Larson managed to make his way through on the two Darm cars then we go back to the rookies as we say of Zachary Sokal and Max Guilford and then Dean Brittle down there in the pack as well with Ryan O'Connor and uh, Raymond Griffin down there as well file restart here at Luxor Western Spring Speedway for under five laps left to run will be Indian file waiting to see those cars nose to tail coming down here to take the green we've got the all important cone just to the right of shot here on the pole line where's the cone there it is there so from that moment on our pace setter Michael Pickens there it is great shot of the cone so that is when Michael Pickens can pick up the gas and run the drivers hard and fast through Penrite turn number three and four. If he chooses to, or he can delay the start and roll them around. He can go early, he can go late, he can go whenever Michael Pickens is ready. After all, he is Michael Pickens. So, uh, as long as he's past the cone, that's right. Lights are out around the speedway once again. Pickens v Allard. Allard giving him a little push, helping him down into the start of this one. Pickens runs them late, goes as late as can be, and runs it down to Midas. Turn number one and two. That car has just jumped. That beautiful package brought to you by Warwick McKenzie and the team from Pipeline just down the road in Avondale. But Pickens has checked out once again. Doesn't look like Dean Cooper's got anything for our second place man, Jonathan Allard. Neither does Stephen Taylor for Cooper. So it looks like the top four have just settled in, but Pickens checks out once again. Three laps left to run. Make that two laps left to run here for this man on screen, the CRC Stadium Finance. Pipeline one in dead. Here he is, the man of the moment. White flag comes out this time around Luke Saw Western Spring Speedway for Michael Pickens. Can he bring it home? I'm sure he can. He's spun the car. He's put the car back on the track. He's led it from green to check it. This man, our man, Michael Pickens, is going to bring home the Salters 25 lap sprint car feature. Second place is going to be the 11 USA of Jonathan Allard in the Dalton's machine. 84p of Dean Cooper brings home a solid third result from Stephen Taylor in the 21W machine. And then we go back to the two Darm cars. Sorry, Jamie Larson was in that Darm sandwich there. So Pickens from Allard, Dean Cooper, Stephen Taylor, Jamie Larson, Keaton Darm, and James Darm. Around out your top seven 
here at Luke's or Western Spring Speedway. So hand out the side of the cockpit there for Michael Pickens to J-Mac, Jamie McDonald. Here we go, Victory Donuts. What are we going to see from MP? Here they are, the man of the moment. Wheel stand for Michael Pickens. No one does it better than this man on screen. He stalls it just like Aaron Hodgson. And there he is, CRC Stadium Finance, 1NZ, Michael Pickens.